Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. What up, y'all? Let me check my chat, young chat box. See what y'all talking about real quick. Come through. YouTube live up in the building. It's bro love, Mr. Cafe Con Leche. Peace. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. We're going to be talking about drum, drum machines and controllers on this one. All right, so y'all just uh, be cool because uh, this is going to be very interesting. Very interesting. I'm back. Had a few young technical difficulties. Peace to everybody out there. I'm chilling in the chat room. Come through. Mic check one, two. Come through. Mic check one, two. There it is, okay. I got myself on the young teleprompter. Get it. All right, so I guess I'll just go ahead and get into it. All right, so what today's podcast is going to be about is, uh, is my camera position good? What today's podcast is going to be about is drum machines. It's going to be about controllers. All right, so... Basically, we got a lot of different controllers out there. Some of y'all guys came in uh, on the NPC Essentials era, and that's what we in right now. And it's not necessarily an era. I'm just saying it like that because there's like a level or there's been a series of drum machines that have come out over the years, and <laughs> um, there's so many different kinds um, I kind of identify them from hardware to digital. And so you got your hardware uh, samplers, and then, of course, you got your Macs and your PCs. That's your sampler now. You also got your iPads, and you got all your other different types of stuff. But I'm going to just be going over some of the hardware that you would connect and some of the hardware that you would use standalone. You dig what I'm saying? Um, so um, a Kai what you saw in the uh, title is like my go-to brand for samplers. I mean, they make the best samplers, man, um, all across the board. There are other companies that make samplers like Emu. Um, and I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head. Uh, but uh, Emu makes some good samplers. Um, there's a lot of different brands, but Akai is the one that I prefer to use, Okay. So uh, the first thing that I want to bring up is this big daddy right here, right? So if you're familiar with this and if you know what you're looking at right here, this is the most epic MPC that ever came out, the MPC 2000. This boy changed the game, right? And it did a lot for producers. When it first came out, it did a lot. Um, it wasn't the first of Akai's prolific brand of samplers. Like, you know, the MPC-60, a lot of cats still use that one. It's dope. But uh, if you came in during this era, mwah, you don't even know. If you came in through this era right here, um, you understand how easy a lot of the newer producers have it because of the fact that there's no sound with this boy. You know, you got this joint if you was able to save up the money and uh, you ran your audio into the back of the joint. You did. You ran your record player into the back of the joint and then you sampled the joint and then you could, you know, get it megged out. 
and uh, you could also uh, upgrade the ports on it and all that. But uh, your sounds came and saved onto this young floppy right here. You dig what I'm saying? And so when you um, when you lost your disc, <laughs> you lost your beat. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Akai, this brand right here, there's none like it. There's none like it. Now, a lot of y'all producers that came in on this era right here uh, don't really respect the guys uh, that came in on this era right here, right? Like, if you use this, you probably still use it today. You probably just, like, stick to a lot of guys that use the Akai MPC. They straight MPC. They never go to software. It's like, forget that. And, you know, some cats cross over to the Renaissance. You know what I'm saying? Some cats don't. But this joint right here is like another level up. You dig what I'm saying? Shout out to Dusty Groove. That's one of my favorite record stores here in Chicago. Anyways... This is the most prolific drum machine of all time, if anybody asks me. If you don't ask me, it don't matter. I'm going to tell you anyway. If you can afford one of these boys right here, I would say go get it because this is a collector's item. And, well, all the car drum machines are collector's items. Every single joint. I don't care if you got an MPD-226. Do not sell it. Keep it. Hold on to it. But if you... If you can get one of these, if you can get your hand on one of these, top of the line production and hip hop will always sound great on an MPC 2000. Um, always. I don't care what you're sampling. It's got a certain sound to it. Whether you want to add that grain to it or just really be crispy, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just an amazing uh, piece of machinery. And so, um, yeah, and so, you know, if you don't use the MPC and you came in on like the uh the the digital age where we started getting controllers like this joint right here um don't don't look down on the cats that use this cuz this will smash anything <laughs> this joint right here will smash anything and uh cats that use the MPC 2000 know that they know that the digital era has nothing on the analog era. And though this is a digital sampler, it just does analog a certain type of way. Vinyl records and samples just sound a certain type of way on this joint right here. You dig what I'm saying? Um, and so uh, that's pretty much all I got to say about that. But uh, if you're just a straight MPC cat, The cats that use the digital joints. So let me go ahead and upgrade you real quick. The cats that use the digital joints aren't necessarily or shouldn't necessarily be downplayed. So a lot of cats that had the 2000 are familiar with this boy right here. Bada bing. This is the MPC-500 right here. And the MPC-5 is dope because, you know, you can get this joint, throw some batteries in it. Got your headphone port, you know, run your record player in. You got your outs. USB, the USB for smart card, you know what I'm saying? Load your sounds on this boy. You lose this, you lose your sound. You dig what I'm saying? Somebody just asked me a question, but how is the workflow of an MPC when it comes to using it with a DAW such as Logic? All right, I'll get into that. I'll get into that. So this boy fit into your bag with the rest of your stuff, you know, during the backpacker rapper age. Actually, backpack, backpacking will never die. But uh, this boy goes straight in your backpack. You take this in the studio, you're ready to go. And what's dope about the digital age now you can find these boys on Amazon. Cats will sell you a smart card with a crazy library already on it. Nobody, no, I didn't tell you that though. So, 
the biggest thing about it is that you have to respect each age of sampling. Even though a cat might use this, don't look down on the dude that used this. Because the dude that used this can kill the man with the MPC 2000 and the man with the iPad and the man with the, uh, <laughs> with the, with the uh, DAW. You don't understand how solid this is. This does not crash. The MPC 2000 does not crash. This is hardware. The only thing that it does is what it does. It does its job and then you cut it off. It ain't got all, it ain't trying to do everything. It's not trying to process effects and it's not trying to open a VST and that's not trying to do all. All it wants to do is load samples up onto the tabletop and then bada bing. Peace. What's up? I did already, it is. I said I did already, it is. Yep. Yeah, Livy already told me I will. Yeah, I got it. All right. Hold on one second, babe. Say that one more time, babe. Okay, babe, I'll see you when you get home. All right. Love you, bye. All right, y'all, that was my queen, so... Yeah, she take precedence over you any day. So anyways, this joint right here will kill anything. And so don't look down on the man that uses this because even today... This will kill any PC equipment or it will kill any DAW out there. Now, the man that asked about the workflow with the MPC and the uh, DAW, like Logic Pro Tools, the thing you have to remember about hardware is that hardware is standalone. Back in the day when the MPC 2000 was prevalent, everybody had to go into the studio and track everything out. Everybody had to track everything out. So when you think about importing and exporting sounds, yes, digital does make things faster. I'm going to get to that. Digital does make things faster. Although the type of sound that you want to achieve depends on the type of equipment that you use. And so... If you use a two MPC 2000 XL, you're going for that particular sound, so you're willing to track out uh, audio. Yes, it is a lot slower because you have to track things out in real time. You can't just export a song in MPC uh, in the MPC 2000. And what I like to do is make a eight bar, sixteen bar, four bar loop, and then I will dump that loop into Logic. And then sequence it from logic. And that's that's the business right there. Okay, somebody just left me a young chat. Hold on a second. Let me. I had to pick up a phone call from my wife because uh, she takes precedence over y'all. Um, even though, you know, I do uh, get a little change off of my YouTube. Uh, the wife and uh, kids still come first. And so uh, y'all just going to have to understand that. I'm trying to log back into my chat because I was on my phone. So, uh, y'all are still good. Y'all are still good. And so, you know, you, you take a, a 4, or 8, or 16 bar loop, and then you dump it into Logic, or you dump it into Pro Tools, or you dump it into um, FL Studio, and then you sequence from there. Um, peace to uh, Asaf Atala. And, uh, yeah, shout out to uh, Asaf Atala. 
How's the workflow? Completely agree, NPC. Solely focus on this core job. Yet getting a hard on great drum samples is what cause, causes hesitation versus simply plugging the MIDI controller. Yeah, man. Um, The software is designed to be crispy already. But at the same time, you lose the grainy sound of analog with digital. It's not the same. You can mimic it, but it's just not the same. So with the um, analog ports on, on these joints, it's just, it's just crazy. Okay, so that's a great segue, Atala. That's a great, great, uh, I don't know if it's Atala or Atala. Asaf, I don't know how to pronounce it, but you know what I'm saying? Charge, don't charge it to my heart, charge it to my head. You dig? But digital age. A guy was like, okay, cats are using their laptops more. V VST start popping off. You dig what I'm saying? So there's like, okay, we're gonna take the NPC, but then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna digitize these joints. So then you had this guy come along. And what's dope about him is he's got a uh He's got an AC-DC port you can plug in so that his MIDI works. You see what I'm saying? You can still control the keyboard with this, but then you can also control and send information back and forth from this to your laptop. You dig what I'm saying? And so then you were able to not only uh, use your DAW or your laptop for uh, full control, but then you could also use this as somewhat of a control surface and say, hey, I want to control these the, the tracks or some type of velocity or something with this. And then, you know, the, the the versatility of this, just like the NPC, you could still hook this MIDI up to a freaking smoke machine and be like, okay, I want the smoke start coming out when I press this pad. You dig what I'm saying? And so they started rocking these. You could, you could uh, tweak any increment or VST or fader or slider or panning or whatever and you even have machine control at the bottom you can start play stop rewind fast forward skip all of that uh, the only thing that this boy didn't come with I don't like is note repeat but you know hey that's what it is um, so <clears throat> digital popped off and so then a lot of these guys that came during this era would start fronting on this these guys you dig what I'm saying? Like, oh, this sounds better. And these guys are like, yeah, but you ain't got the grainy sound. And these guys are like, well, this is easier to control, and it's 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 uh, you have a uh, uh, a wider range of functions that you can do with this guy. And these guys was like, yeah, but your laptop crashed and you lost your entire library of sounds. You lost all your projects and all of your music, and your artist is pissed off at you because you can't give him his studio session files mm -hmm. because you lost everything after your hard drive got corrupted. And so then this guy's like, you got a point, but I'm still dope. So, you know, when you're looking at this boy right here, you're looking at control, you're looking at power, and you're looking at, you know, a lot of functionality. You know what I'm saying? And you're looking at tweakability. Every one of these pads and notes, even every little increment on the slider can be uh, set to do a different thing. You know what I'm saying? You can put a wow wow on this. Wow, 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 wow. While you're playing your guitar or keyboard, wow, wow, be tweaking this joint. You know what I'm saying? Same thing here. You could be panning left and right and all that. And uh, a lot of these guys that use this, or you guys that use software and you're using controllers, some of the newer controllers, whether it's made by a car or not, don't hate on the MPC 2000 dudes. You, you see what I'm saying? Because if it wasn't for these dudes, it wouldn't be none of this right here. If it weren't for these dudes that was scraping up that 2K or whatever to get this, it wouldn't have been a budget for this. You dig what I'm saying? And so that's why I respect Akai so much because they look... And they saw the market, what producers was buying, and then they started putting more money into the budget for this age right here. You dig what I'm saying? And so, boom. Without this boy right here, and cats feeding it to the digital, you wouldn't have this right here. And y'all know. <laughs> y'all already know. Same thing. You take the the pads from the MPC 2000, the portability, 
of the 500, the control of the MPB series, and then taking and putting all of that into this little joint. You make it small enough to put into a laptop bag. The first one didn't even have the uh, bender, the knob. And I'm going to do a knob series, too, on my channel. But uh, <clears throat> didn't have a knob. We was like, yeah, it'd be nice to have some pitch bend. A guy had their ear to the street. They had their ear to the internet. It's like, okay, we're going to throw one in there. You dig what I'm saying? Apologies if y'all dealing with lag. Just kind of uh, hang tough with it. It'll, it'll, it'll come through. Mm. All right, so if you use one of these, don't hate on the dude with the MPC 2000. Don't hate on the dude with the MPD. Don't hate on the dude who uses analog equipment. Because if it wasn't for the MPC, then you wouldn't have this guy right here. You dig what I'm saying? And that's all I'm saying. When you rock in the Akai MPK Mini, it's only because it was some cats that saw the MPC 2000 and they started rocking with it. You dig what I'm saying? The Akai MPK Mini, bro, is one of the hardest controllers out right now. Like, this joint right here does everything from tweak your hi-hats to, to bang your drums out. You know what I'm saying? To give you those big, synthy sounds in uh, all of your VSTs. And it gives you the functionality of keys. Where, you know, when we was using the MPC 2000 XL, uh, shout out to Jay Phil on um, YouTube. We had to come up with chord, chord uh, um, shapes. We played piano keys on this joint like a piano, but we had chord shapes. Uh, Jay Phil, the YouTuber, has a uh, book that he did on 16-pad chord shapes and 12-pad chord shapes. So whether you use a, a MPD, MPC, or uh, whatever, uh, check out that book. So just to close this thing all the way off, man, to let y'all uh, uh, go and do what you're going to do on your Friday night, uh, the digital age is here, but don't hate on the analog age. And if you're still rocking analog, please don't hate on the digital age. Because at the end of the day, if you're using an MPC 2000, you're going to have to go to a computer at one point. Or unless you still, like we used to do back in the day, running into a mini disc recorder <laughs> or running into a straight CD burner. Some of the CD burners used to have an analog in uh, port, RCA or whatever, quarter inch in. So, bada bing, bada bap. Bring all the worlds together. You dig what I'm saying? If you're using an analog, if you're using a digital, everybody come together in the studio and, 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 and basically work together. Figure it out. Take the bass guitar, run it into whatever you got to run it into and take the, take the uh, MPC software and, and play it while they doing their thing with the bass or the lead guitar. Take the drummer, run him into the laptop, and play the synthesizer from the MPK. Everybody, it all works together, man. It's all, it does this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It does this, bro. Shout out to Shia LaBeouf. Just do it. You know what I'm saying? It, it all, it does just like this. And it doesn't matter what type of music you do. You might do country. Country can gel with hip hop. That's the thing about hip hop. It's so universal. You can work it with somebody who's in China and using the Chinese scale on hip hop drums. It sounds ill. RZA showed you that with Wu Tang. You know what I'm saying? Country music. It's it's some cats out here in Middle America that's taking hip hop drums and putting it on sliding guitars. Sounds. It's butter. Sample some Creedence Clearwater. Sample some some uh, BGs or some some uh, Saturday Night Fever. Any of that stuff, man. Drop it on your drums. Mm. Digital analog come together like that. Uh. But try to preserve the analog, man. It's so important. Analog is so important, and it's it's it can't die. You dig what I'm saying? I'ma die one day. You dig what I'm saying? I'ma die. Analog sound, it needs to be preserved. You dig what I'm saying? You'll be able to look at this video 50 years, 100 years from now. I'll be out of here.
You dig what I'm saying? I'll be gone. But producers will still be continuing to innovate and create and make new sounds. Maybe this will be the Kai uh, MPZ 9000. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but preserve the analog sound. Akai's leg legacy is amazing. At the same time, hip hop, its legacy is amazing. And I'm letting you guys know analog, digital, they like husband and wife. You dig what I'm saying? The high end on digital is crazy. But the low end on analog, oh, it's like the bass in the trouble. It's a perfect chick. You know what I'm saying? It's a perfect chick. She got the top and the bottom. You know what I'm saying? But, anyways, Umbrella, Mr. Cafe, what? Con leche. And I'm out of here. Peace. Two fingers. Make sure you like this video. Comment. Subscribe. Peace to Jerusalem. <laughs>